neuroscience is obviously fascinating, but the truth of the matter is I could teach anything and be happy. It's the teaching that I love. My mother, my daughter, and I all went to Smith. My mother uh, graduated in 1950 as a zoology major, and she felt very privileged to be able to go to Smith because uh, financially it would have been difficult uh, for her to attend except for a a sort of rich, distant relative who we refer to as Cousin Eleanor was able to come up with some money so she could go to college. Now that's the science that's building. That's Burton Hall. Okay, that's where I spent a great deal of my time. I was a depression kid. Uh, I was so thankful that my dream of college materialized. Um, it was humbling. I didn't really realize that till I got here. I think it's a common thing of freshmen. I don't know if you felt it, but you come from being a big fish in a little pond to being the littlest fish in a big, big pond. Uh, it was very challenging. It, it was a great adventure. I was very much like my mother in terms of our academics. Uh, she was a, what I call a nerdy student, a science nerd. And I was the same way. And I was very shy at this point. I, I never thought I could get in front of a group of students or anybody. So I was a proctor, teaching assistant for introductory psychology, and also a lab assistant for the experimental psych class. And in both of those, you had to either lead group discussions or help students in the laboratory. And I found that right away very rewarding. I was start, starting even then to think, gosh, I might like to do this. But if we flattened out the brain, okay, and we you know, took all those convolutions away and just stretched them out, this would be the surface area of your brain. It's about two and a half feet square. Now, would it be good to walk around with a head like this? <laughs> Could we get it through the birth canal? No. So evolution has sort of crumpled it up. Beth is so what much the same here, person the uh, now that she was then. And the she brain. was, from the beginning, uh, be just an outstanding student. When the position for the research methods uh, came open, and we often hired graduate students to teach that course, I just knew she'd be good at it because I'd seen her do it. The students really liked her then. They still do. <laughs> and I think a part of that is because she is just so interested in them. Her door is always open. She's always got students in her office. She advises many more majors in neuroscience and psych than anyone else in the, in the department and program. Are you thinking of a double major then, or a major and a minor? If you ask them about Beth, they say she really is invested in us, and she wants us to learn. She is so open that it makes it really easy to come to her and be open with your own questions or anxieties and she was very good to kind of help you realize in yourself that you know the answers or if you don't that she could help you and she put you on your own path. She has this acute ability to observe well and also this respect uh, that permeates everything she does I think and she, so she teaches by example in so many different ways not just in front of a class. So I volunteer at Dakin Animal Shelter, and I think almost everyone who volunteers there uh, goes home with a pet. The kittens, when the kittens come in, they are just really hard to resist, and they do go pretty fast. Um, their adoption rate is phenomenal. I learn a lot. I love animal behavior. That was my research interest anyway, so it sort of, it does link to um, what I do professionally, but to say I really like to mop a floor or do dishes sounds strange, but it's much different doing it there than doing it at home. The fact that Beth has all these amazing qualities and is interested in animals as well really got me interested in how I can connect that to what I want to do in life, and that is um, wildlife conservation. Pets are incredibly important to me, a very important part of my family. My younger daughter, Kelly, is uh, 18, just graduated from high school. Kelly and I took classes at, uh, it's called the Collard Scholar, and we took the, what's called agility for fun, and uh, Kelly works with uh, the small dog, the Klikai, and I work with Brewski, the, the larger dog. And I guess I also have to mention that my kids grew up at Smith, you know, in the infant center, in the campus school, in my office, so 
those memories are blended with Smith as well. So for me, um, I have my mother's heritage and experience and I have my children's being here um, as both toddlers running around, but also as my older daughter, Amanda, being a student here and even a student in my classes. I also believe that a good teacher has to somewhat personalize the information, and this is something that my colleagues disagree with me on. You know, I bring in personal stories, and I think that's proper, appropriate. I think it nails down the information for students. Frontal lobes are relatively immature in teenagers. This is a problem because of the executive functions, the inhibition that the frontal lobe <laughs> provides. The first time I ever drank something, I won't tell you how old I was, but I will tell you that I drank an entire bottle, a jug of wine, and was incredibly sick for three days. Um, so that what it was is a lot of throwing up. So that's the immediate consequence. And then there's a delayed consequence. If you continue to drink, well, you, get, you have a hangover the next day, and then you can develop down the road not only an addiction, but uh, damage to you, your liver. But if you try to tell a teenager not to drink because it will damage your liver, is that very effective? No, and it's because they can't see the long-term consequences because their executive functions are not there. The students this both with their feet, with the they go the to the good teachers. She, she's challenging, she yeah. makes the students work, but she works very hard with the students to make sure they succeed. That makes a huge difference. There are all sorts of perks that people get for the research they do. You know, you, you publish it and you can hold it in your hand. You go to conventions and you get to talk about it. But you don't get the same kind of rewards from teaching uh, that you do for doing research. I'm not in a tenure track position um, and I'm actually glad because I, it gives me some freedom to do the things that I want to do, which is um, deal with students both in the classroom and outside the classroom as advisors. Sometimes when I'm having a bad day I will pull out a letter that a student wrote me and in that letter she said, uh, no nobody told me I could learn neuroscience, nobody told me I could write uh, experimental research reports and she, she was saying to me that I, I believed in her. Having an impact on their lives and their decisions and feeling their appreciation um, of me is, I mean, what more could you ask for?